Good evening. I'm going to tell you the story, a true story, of the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. Now, as I tell you this dream, which is true, I should mention. As I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming of that I'm coming home from work. I'm walking through the neighborhood and I come to my house. My house is, of course, a dark and scary gothic mansion. Many rooms, many minarets, many towers, vines creeping across the walls. And as I walk up and I crunch onto my barren dirt lawn, I look out and see my wonderful pet, who is a giant wolf with red eyes. And the red eyes are looking at me as it's howling at the moon, as the moon is coming up from the horizon. I walk past the wolf and it greets me as I am the master of this mansion. I walk to my front door and I open the door. I put my suitcase down. I go for a break and at some point as the sun sets, and the moon rises, it is time for bed. So I go to my bed and I snuggle oh so gently in my covers. It's very cold, but the cold feels so good under my covers. And as I'm sleeping, crawling, from the sides and crawling up my nerves, I feel a presence. Not just one, not just two, but five. I turn over in my bed and what do I see? But I see five ghostly figurines made of porcelain. Their skin reflects the sunlight that is streaming through my window. They look down at me and at one say, Father, it is nighttime. We are hungry. Hungry for blood. And of course, I freak out and wake up from my bed, and there's nothing there. No five ghost daughters. And in the image in my brain, etched for all of eternity, I see all five of these children, each one with a different, slight variant from the other. They all hold hands and only the ones on the end can point and say, you are our father. Bring us blood for we are hungry, father. As you can imagine, I am very freaked out, freaking out in my bed, sweating a little bit. All my skin is crawling. All of my hairs are sticking up all over my body. More frightened than I have ever been. But of course I have to use the bathroom. And this is only a dream, obviously. I tiptoe to the bathroom and I pass by my closet, a closet full of clothes. And as I step past my closet, out of the darkness, I hear a voice 
and she comes close to my ear and says, Father, we are hungry. I slam into the bathroom. I close the door and I'm shaking and shivering with fear. That dread of adrenaline, the shock of panic is coursing through me. Am I awake? Am I still dreaming? I pinch myself and of course I'm awake. But did something actually whisper out of my closet? Are the ghost daughters real? I do my business in the toilet. I wash my hands, which is appropriate. And I have to stay to figure out if I am brave enough to open the door. I take a deep breath. I grab the plunger. I open the door and there's nothing there. Nothing but a closet full of junk, nothing of import. I take a deep breath, walk past my clothes, walk past the junk, and huddle in my bed with a plunger next to my bed, hoping that the ghost daughters won't come back as I fall and drift away into sleep. Suddenly, they're there again, and they're hungry, but this time, the dream is different. I, of course, am the ghost daughter's father, and obviously I must take care of them, as is what a father does. So I find blood. There are evil people in the world, of course. There are people that do terrible things in every town. And so in my town, I know who they are, and I find them, and I take my ghostly porcelain doll daughters and I put them in the car, car seats of all, so that way they are strapped in so they do not break or shatter. And I drive them to someone who is much more evil than they. And I point at their house and I say, that is evil where you can feed. And they go feed. They find those who are evil and they crawl inside the house. They find the evildoer suck their blood from their bodies and leave only a stain. They come back to my car and I lovingly kiss them on their forehead and I put them back in their car seats and we go home. As the moon soars through the night and eventually sets, it is time for them to go to bed. So I take them upstairs. I take them into their giant rocking bed for which there are five places for them to sleep in repose. They fall into a gentle sleep as the sun rises. And they say to me, Father, we love you for you have taken care of us, and we have taken care of evil in your town. Tomorrow night when it is our morning and your evening, we shall be hungry again. And the ghost daughters close their eyes as the first rays of the sun break through their window and their faces, which had been human but porcelain turn only into dolls. And as I rock them to sleep, I thank them for their service of cleansing this town 
with so much evil. Now this was an actual dream I had. Um, it was in two parts. I had the dream, I woke up, I went to the bathroom, I actually did hear the voice clearly speaking to my ear, Father, we're hungry. Um, I had a near-death panic attack and then I got the um, gumption, courage up to uh, go back to sleep. Uh, I went back to sleep and woke up the next day and told everybody about this dream. And I actually thought that maybe no, somebody had snuck into my room, um, somebody was playing a game on me, you know. Um, but no, everybody was like, what? Um, and everybody I've told this dream to, they've been like, that is creepy as all get out. Um, my nieces, my sister's two daughters, um, I've told them this story because they wanted to hear, I want to hear a creepy story. Uh, and so I told them this story um, and what's funny is that they both have kind of latched onto them. And every now and again, when I say, hey girl, you know, we go out to dinner or so, get some lunch. Hey girls, what do you want to go eat? And you know, they'd look at me and go, Father, we want blood. And be like, all right, you two, that is too much creepiness from both of you. Uh, but it is kind of fun that, you know, I say, hey, you have five ghost cousins, you know, so if you're ever scared of something, just call on the five ghost cousins. They might come, but it might be a terrible, terrible thing that they did. Uh, um, this uh, story that I told, again, uh, was real, was a real dream that I had. Um, and the reason why I thought this would be a fun little video to do um, was because the PBS channel Storied um, did a story about Slender Man and how that uh, folklore came from the internet. Uh, and so I had thought to myself, you know, I should tell the ghost daughter story dream because it is such a messed up dream of having these five little daughters of yours saying we're hungry for blood and please feed us and then you go feed them. Uh, terrible people. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, hopefully if you like creepy stuff, hopefully you enjoyed the creepy stuff. Um, if you don't like the creepy stuff, why did you watch the video? I posted that it was creepy in the description and all that. Um, I am gonna use this story um, in a book. I know exactly where they're set and exactly where they are. Um, um, so I thought it was fun that they're kind of, you know, in there. So if anybody wants to, you know, hopefully in the future the book gets published and you know, people will see this and go, oh, that's what that's from. That's so random and bizarre, but so creepy and bizarre. Um, and one of the interesting parts in the um, second part of the dream after we got home, actually, which I kind of omitted from the story because it kind of ruins the tone of the story, is it becomes less creepy and more sitcom-y, where it's like, you know, father and her five ghost daughters, blah, blah, you know, and so I'm, you know, I'm washing the dishes, you know, and I turn around and there they are, and I drop the dish and it breaks everywhere. You know, I'm doing laundry and I fold in, I put it up and I turn around and there they are, being all creepy and, you know, and I'm always like, oh, you girls, you know, as we have lots of wacky, wacky hijinks, you know, while they go eat somebody because they're hungry for blood and all they leave is a stain because they eat their bones and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and they're porcelain dolls at, at uh, daytime, but you know, you know, hellish demon spawn girls uh, during the nighttime. Um, yeah, it was a fun story. So I ho hope you enjoy it. Um, it was fun to tell in this kind of way. I turned my little studio into a spooky macabre night. Yeah, I'm just trying to be Elvira. That's what's up. I ain't got the uh, <clears throat> for it, but uh, hey, let's try to have fun with some scary stuff because, you know, sometimes dealing with scary stuff in your life, if you hear some scary stuff that's not real, you know, it, it kind of, you can say, oh, that's not real or this is how I deal with it. And so that's how you learn how to develop control over your own emotions and over the situation you're in so you feel a sense of disempowerment you feel like I'm out of control and you learn how to create control over that scary situation and so you feel good about it so hopefully that did a little bit of that for you um, I hope you enjoyed it take care of yourself I hope your creative endeavors bring you peace love and happiness I love you ghost daughters <laughs>